a student's overview of the ageless wisdom was carefully compiled from the following books by Alice A. Bailey. A Treatise on Cosmic Fire Esoteric Psychology, Volumes 1 and 2 Esoteric Healing Esoteric Astrology The Rays and the Initiations Students are encouraged to download the free PDF version of this overview by following the link in the video's description, or to order a printed copy at cost from the bookpatch.com, but are advised to read the original, unabridged books in order to gain deeper insight into the ageless wisdom. Students are also invited to join our online study group at facebook.com slash groups, slash students of the ageless wisdom. Chapter 43 Esoteric Psychology Volume 2 A Technique for Meditation This particular technique of meditation involves the use of the head center, demands the ability to focus the consciousness in the soul form, the spiritual body, and, at the same time, to preserve soul consciousness, mind consciousness and brain consciousness, no easy task for the neophyte and something which lies far ahead for the majority of students who read these words. This condition has been described as the intensest reflection of the man, isolated in God who is the negation of isolation and is nevertheless the whole which is set apart from other wholes. When this state of awareness has been achieved, and Patanjali hints at it in the last book of the sutras, the disciple becomes invincible upon the physical plane, for he is completely unified and linked up with all aspects of himself in the greater whole of which he is a part, is fusing all attributes and is at one with the whole, not simply subjectively and unconsciously, as are all human beings, but in full waking, understanding awareness. Inclusive reason, which is the theme for the initiator a meditation of the second ray disciple, produces that inherent divine capacity which enables the detail of the sensed whole to be grasped in meticulous entirety. This wide, yet detailed, Scope or universal recognition is extremely difficult for me to explain or for you to understand. The second ray has been called the ray of detailed knowledge and where this term has been employed, the beginner has necessarily laid the emphasis upon the word detail. It might rather be called the ray of detailed unity or the ray of the divine pattern, or of beauty in relationship. It involves on the part of the disciple a very high point of synthetic comprehension. Presented attributes, are those which have presented themselves to the consciousness of the advanced disciple, which are as yet not capable of interpretation nor can they be comprehended by average human beings, but which are attributes of the kingdom of souls, and which will distinguish that kingdom in its final stages. These latent attributes can be gradually comprehended and brought into activity by those who can function as souls. I would like to lay down four fundamental propositions. 1. That in time and space, man is essentially dual, consisting of soul and body, of intelligent life and form, of a spiritual entity and the apparatus of contact the body nature whereby that entity can become aware of worlds of phenomena and states of consciousness of a nature different to those on its own level of awareness. 2. That this body nature consists of the physical outer form, the sum total of vitality or the etheric body, which science today is rapidly coming to recognize, the sensitive, emotional, desire body, and the mind. Through the physical body contact is made with the environing tangible world, through the vital body the impulses come which produce direction and activity upon the physical plane, 
through the sensory vehicle the astral or emotional nature originates the bulk of those desires and impulses which direct the undeveloped or average man, and which can be called desire impulses or the wish life of the individual, through the mind comes eventually intelligent understanding and a life directed by purpose and planning instead of desire. 3. That human unfoldment proceeds by a series of integrations, of processes of coordination or synthesis, involving as they do, particularly when the intelligence is beginning to control, a sense of cleavage and of duality. These integrations, as far as humanity is concerned, either lie far behind in the past, are proceeding at this time, or lie ahead in the future. End of page 222 Past Integrations Between the animal body and the vital body Between these two and the sensitive desire nature Between these three and the lower concrete mind Present Integrations between these four aspects thus producing a coordinated personality. Future integration. Between the personality and the soul. The point to be remembered is that in racial history, many of these integrations have already taken place unconsciously as the result of life stimulation, the evolutionary urge, the normal processes of living experience through contact with the environment, and also of satisfaction leading to satiety of the desire nature. But there comes a time in racial unfoldment, as in the lives of individuals, when the blind process of evolutionary acquiescence becomes the living conscious effort, and it is right at this point that humanity stands today. Hence the realization of the human problem in terms of modern psychology, hence the widespread suffering of human units everywhere, hence the effort of modern education, and hence also the emergence in every country on a wide scale and in increasingly large numbers of three kinds of people. 1. Those conscious of cleavage. 2. Those achieving integration with much pain and difficulty. 3. Personalities, or integrated and therefore dominant people. 4. That at the same time in every country, men and women are proceeding towards a still higher synthesis and achieving it the synthesis of soul and body. This produces a sense of destiny, individual and racial a sense of purpose, and of plan. It produces also the unfoldment of the intuition, the sublimation of the intellect, as that was the sublimation of the instinctual nature, and the consequent recognition of the higher ideas and idealism, and of those basic truths which when disseminated among the thinking people of the world, will produce great mental and material changes with their transitory accompaniments and upheaval, of chaos, experiment, destruction and rebuilding. Attention will then be given to the integration of the personality, so that all three aspects shall function as one unit. We have, therefore, a. The child state, in which the three first integrations are brought about and the objective of the educational procedure will be to effect this with the minimum of difficulty. b. The human state, dealing with the integration of all the aspects into one functioning self-conscious, self-directed personality. c. The spiritual state, dealing with the integration of the personality and the soul, thus evoking the consciousness of the whole. When this is accomplished, group consciousness is added to self-consciousness, and this is the second great step on the way to God consciousness. The difficulty today is that we have on every hand people at all different stages in the integrative process, 
all of them in a state of crisis and all of them therefore providing the problems of modern psychology. These problems may be divided more precisely into three major groupings. 1. The problems of cleavage. These in their turn are of two kinds. a. The problems of integration. b. Those arising out of a sense of duality. This sense of duality, as the result of realized cleavage, ranges all the way from the split personality difficulties of so many people to those of the mystic with his emphasis upon the lover and the loved, the seeker and the sought, upon God and his child. End of page 223 2. The problems of integration, which produce many of the difficulties of the more advanced people. 3. The problems of stimulation. These arise as the result of an achieved synthesis and integration, producing consequently an inflow of unaccustomed energy. This inflow may express itself as a high voltage ambition, as a sense of power as desire for personality influence or as true spiritual power and force. In every case, however, comprehension of the resultant phenomena is required, and most careful handling. Arising from these problems we find also 1. Mental problems Certain definite complexes occur when the integration of the mind with the three lower aspects has been brought about, and some clear thought about them will be useful. 2. The diseases of mystics. These are concerned with those attitudes of mind, those complexities of idea and those spiritual enterprises which affect the mystically inclined or those who are aware of the spiritual dualism of which street. Paul wrote in the Epistle to the Romans. Romans 7, 14-24 These difficulties will call for increasing attention as the race proceeds towards personality integration and from thence to soul contact. The Internal Anatomy of Man In considering the inner structure of man and those factors which produce the outer appearance and quality and condition it, thus producing the resultant behavior and conduct, psychologists will have to study the following subjects, beginning with the lowest aspect and expanding their ideas to include the highest possible. These might be grouped and listed as follows. 1. The outer response apparatus, acting under impulses received from the outer environment and the inner subjective realms. These come, according to the esoteric theories, via a. the brain, from whence certain aspects of the nervous system are directed and controlled, first by mental influence and then by conscious soul direction. B the endocrine or glandular system, acting under impulses entering the physical body via the seven centers in the etheric body, of these centers, the glandular system is simply the externalization, or physical counterpart. The glands condition the man through the bloodstream, being in their turn conditioned by the centers. C. The solar plexus directing and controlling certain aspects of the nervous system, and which is in large part the instinctual or animal brain. d. The heart, the center of life. 2. The vital or etheric body. This is the major energizing factor and is an exact replica or counterpart of the outer form, being the true intermediary between the inner worlds and the outer man. The nadis, lines or threads of force, 
underlie every nerve in the human body and the centers which they form at certain points of intersection or juncture are the background or motivating agency of every ganglion or plexus found in the human body. Certain of these centers, major and minor, are of unique evolutionary importance. These are as follows. A. The head center is the seat of soul energy, or the center through which the conscious, spiritual man functions. B. The heart center is the seat of life, of the highest principle which expresses itself through man. C. The solar plexus center is the seat of the instinctual life, of the animal soul, and of the highly developed emotional nature. D. The center at the base of the spine is the major integrating center and comes into functioning activity when two major fusions have been affected, that of the fusions of the three bodies into one coordinated personality, and when soul and body are at one. End of page 224 3. The emotional or sentient body, which is often called the astral body. From this vehicle emanate the desires, impulses, aspirations and those conflicts of duality which so oft afflict and hinder the disciple. It is the seat also of the creative, imaginative life of man. It also possesses centers of force which are counterparts of those to be found in the etheric body, but for the majority of people it is energized mainly from the world of illusion and from the astral plane. It is from this plane of illusory awareness, that the advanced man has to learn to withdraw himself. 4. The mind nature, which works through four centers and only four. 5. The soul itself, or the true spiritual man, the self in manifestation, working through or seeking to work through, its phenomenal appearance, the fourfold lower man. If the above is carefully studied, it will become apparent that the cleavages which exist in man are cleavages in certain inherent or basic relations. 1. Found within the man himself, in one or other of these various focal points of realization or awareness. a. Unrecognized by the man himself or by those around him. When this is the case, the man is unevolved and the cleavages or gaps in his consciousness do no real harm relatively, either to himself or to those in his environment. They simply indicate lack of development. b. When recognized, they produce distress and difficulty and the man becomes in need of sound psychological help. Correct information along the lines here laid down can be given in those cases where the intellectual type is involved. The psychologist is then dealing with people who should be able and willing to help themselves. C. When the man has effected the necessary bridging and unification, he then becomes a unified personality. Then the mystic can emerge. This means that he has achieved the point wherein the higher bridging between the integrated personality and the soul becomes possible. Finally, a master of the wisdom, who is an exponent of the Christ consciousness, in its unifying, salvaging and constructive aspects, appears. The atwaning of the higher and the lower nature will produce results which will be determined in their field of expression by a man's ray. These ray conditions will result in a man's finding his right field of usefulness and right expression in the political, religious, or scientific fields, and in other modes of divine manifestation. 1. Found between a man and his environment. The effect of this may mean that he is an antisocial human being, or unpopular, full of fear of life, or expressing, in many other forms, 
his inability to tune in on his surroundings. Lack of understanding, of right relationship, and inability correctly to blend the inner and the outer forms of the life structure, will be evidenced. The cause of the cleavage in this case is usually found somewhere within the astral body itself. 2. Found between a man and his life task, or the life activity to which fate ordains him and predisposition inclines him. The difficulty here lies in a definite break or failure of continuity between the mind nature, determining purpose, and the astral nature governing impulse. 3. Found between a man and his overshadowing, and slowly domination, soul. This leads to much realized unhappiness, dire conflict, and the eventual and symbolic death of the personality. Here again I would like to pause and to point out that the concepts of death, of substitution, of the vicarious at one moment and of sacrifice, will in the new age be superseded by the concepts of resurrection or of livingness, of spiritual unity, of transference and of service, so that a new note will enter into human life, bringing hope and joy and power and freedom. End of page 225 End of chapter 43